Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Triska Decophile Control. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another gameplay video. Yes, we do have a Triska Decophile deck uh, in front of us. It's a very hard word to say, as it turns out. Uh, this was submitted to us uh, by Jeremy, who is our mod in Discord, as well as over here on YouTube during the live stream. So, Jeremy, thank you so much. He submitted, like, a crazy long list of cards right now so, or of decks right now so we've got actually a lot of his decks to go through but uh this one really caught my eye i was looking through the ones he sent and this is good uh, because it has the triska decophile i thought it was really interesting now i should note I'm calling this Triska Decophile Control solely because it has this as a win condition, uh, and it does have a lot of control elements, as you can see. We've got the Doom Scars, we've got the Farewells, we've got a lot of, you know, random pieces that we'll hopefully be able to utilize, but the idea is basically to just draw a ton of cards and hopefully win uh, in any number of ways, whether that be Triska Decophile, whether that be uh, the Augur of Agonies, uh, whether that be just, like, pure card advantage and taking over that way and kind of dwindling the resources of the opponent but all of that to say we have got some very very powerful options here we also can win through the lands with the hall of the storm giants which is awesome uh, now, again, a lot of the deck is set up to draw cards, so uh, we do have the Wizard class, we've got the Faithful Mending, uh, we do have some interesting other things, uh, in particular Wire Tapping is a card that I'm kind of curious to try out here. It's Hideaway 5, whenever you draw your first card during each of your draw steps, you draw another card. Uh, then if you have nine or more cards in hand, you can play the Exiled card without paying its mana cost. This works extraordinarily well, of course, after a good setup turn with something like Faithful Mending, maybe a Wizard Class uh, Level 2, uh, maybe a Seagate Restoration. Uh, ideally, getting a lot of cards in hand and then uh, being able to play a free card, which is awesome. Uh, with the Augur of Agonies, we'll also be draining our opponent uh, for, for some life here. This is the only black card in the deck, uh, but we do have some black mana, of course, to help us get there. Sunset Revelry, kind of a nice card in this deck because uh, we get to do one of three, or all of three, potentially. Uh, you can either gain four life, uh, put two one ones on the field, or draw a card. Now, this is all dependent on what the opponent has, so you can do up to all of these, but if they have more life, you gain four life. If they have more creatures, you gain two creatures and if they have more cards you draw a card uh, now that draw a card is probably going to be a little less likely uh, because we are the heavy heavy card draw deck but it's certainly possible uh, and so I'm really excited about that we do have you find a villain's lair this is obviously to protect some of our other pieces with that counter magic but you can also use it of course to, to draw some cards which is great uh, Ingenious Mastery, you can pay two in a blue rather than paying this spell's mana cost. If that was paid, you draw three cards and then an opponent creates two treasure co tokens and then they scry two. Uh, if that cost wasn't paid, you just draw X cards. So this is a really easy way to get to the point where you can trigger that Triska Decophile on the next turn. That's really important to note. Uh, now, all this to say, this is going to be an interesting one. I don't expect that we'll win through the Triska Decophile. Uh, man, that's hard to say, but I would like to try. Uh, we do have Nico here as well. I forgot to mention that, but I am I am expecting this to be a very fun one. We'll see if we can get some wins. We may not, but you know what? We're gonna have some fun today, guys. Let's uh, let's enjoy this one. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is certainly an interesting hand. I think we'll keep this. The question becomes, do we want to uh, play the wizard class turn one or leave up the test of talents? And now we actually don't have to decide that for ourselves. We got the uh, the island, which will help us out. We don't get to play the faithful mending off of this hand, but we do have a number of other ways in, 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 uh, to specify. Wow, ingenious mastery, uh, which can draw us some cards here. So I feel okay about this. Um, What's the likelihood of them having an instant or sorcery spell? Probably not very high, but the second wizard class obviously doesn't do a lot for us either, so I'm just going to leave this up just in case. Maybe we hit a commune with it, you know, something like that. Um, probably not likely that it's going to do too much here, to be honest. Uh, obviously, this is going to be the Selesnya enchantments list. Doubt it's Naya at this point, um, and that's fine, but certainly think we're going to have some issues with this one, so we'll do the best we can. Really, the best thing we can hope for, I think, is just going to be like a Doomscar turn that really wipes the board. Or, I mean, Farewell is amazing, but it's a little bit slower. So, okay, well, there's the Doomscar. Uh, I do like that. We do need some lands is the problem. 
Uh, and in fact, we're really far off from being able to cast it. So I think what the play will be is just to cast or uh, level up the wizard class here to hope we can hit some of the correct lands. There's one of them. Uh, we do need a little bit more, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, this does provide us with white, so hopefully we can get another white source in the next draw. Uh, but we'll see. Um, this is certainly a scary board presence for us, though. We really are going to need something, uh, something big here, for sure. Uh, we can go ahead and throw that down. Um, I guess there's not a huge reason not to do this. I'm trying to think if we want to uh, go ahead and Ingenious Mastery just to draw some extra cards here. Um, I think we probably do just because again we really have to hit a white source thankfully we did uh, so that's really helpful we do give them the advantage of uh, the scry as well as the treasure tokens which is obviously not good for us hopefully they can't win the game off of that but I mean we kind of had to hit that white source and thankfully I mean it was in the top three but it was the third card we drew so again I think that was the right call uh, I don't know that we had a better option there so I think we just kind of had to do it. And this is actually not the end of the world. I mean, this is really good. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nines. So we actually do get to kind of kind of get them here. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's, uh, it's certainly an option. And that actually helps significantly as well, because next turn we can just exile the whole board. So hopefully they just... Well, I mean, they're not Naya, so they probably don't have a rune of speed, which means we might be able to work this out here. Okay, borrowed time on this is not the end of the world, actually. In fact, we're going to get it back, which is phenomenal. So, let's do this. Let's exile uh, all artifacts. I mean, basically everything, I think. Um, we get our wizard class back, which is phenomenal. And now they basically lose everything that they've built up to up until this point. We're still very far behind, uh, so we do have a long way to go here. But we've got some options. Um... Let's go for the blue. I'm going to just throw this out here just to give us a little bit of extra benefit. Um, and I think we actually are going to just end up passing here. We might be able to bounce this, which would be kind of nice. We also just have you find a villain's layer to uh, to kind of throw some, some counter magic at them if we so choose. So if they happen to play like a hollowed haunting or, you know, something along those lines, we certainly want that off the field. Um... Hmm. Let's see. I am going to counter this. Uh, this is a little bit of a like awkward play. It's probably not as important as it seems. Uh, so I'm just going to not worry too much about that. But I will probably just block with one of our 1-1s one here. Uh, we also get to Faithful Mending, which is quite nice. Uh, so we do have to discard two here. That's fine. It's probably Test of Talents. As much as I love Test of Talents, it really doesn't do that much here. Um, uh, no, this is Trample, so we'll just let that through. Um, but we are gaining some life back, which is certainly helpful. That's actually quite nice. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That does allow us to play that. Um, do we think we can manage it, though, with this on the field? Probably not, right? So let's do this. I think we're going to end up having to wait on that. This allows us to Soaring City if we so choose. Um, Sunset Revelry is not bad either. All right. Um, I think we just pass here. Uh, we're going to leave up the, the two one ones. We're also going to leave up the Soaring City uh, so we can potentially kind of get them here at least a little bit. Um, and I think I will just go ahead and bounce this. Again, not an amazing play by any means, but it does kind of stem the bleeding for a turn, which is helpful. And next turn, we of course have Seagate uh, Restoration. So I'm going to just go ahead and run this out there. That draws us quite a bit of cards. We have no maximum hand size anymore, uh, which is also quite good. Um, and I think we just Sunset Revelry here. Um... We will not attack. All right. So next turn, what do we have? We have no sweepers. A sweeper would be really nice here, but we just don't have one. Uh, we do have the auger, though, which is quite nice. We're not going to block here. We're just going to take that, unfortunately. Sunset. Okay. Um, 
Let's do this. Whoop. Let's do this. Um, that's really, really good for us. Okay, so... I think I'm just gonna go wizard class and draw two. I think this is okay. I'd kind of like to set up for a really good uh, ingenious mastery. So I kind of just want to wait on that. I will go ahead, I guess, and throw this out. Uh, and yeah, I think I will attack for one. Let's get some damage going. So now, again, basically we're at a position where we just need to be able to take over the game with this auger. They could very easily have a borrowed time, have any way of removing this, and that's annoying, but... Uh, it's not the end of the world for us, so they're just basically trying to get stuff off the field so they can keep damaging us. Perfectly fine. Doesn't really bother me, um, because again, we, we have ways to drain life now, which is pretty awesome. So, not super worried about that. Um, I think we're going to do the cool thing. Um, Alright, let's, uh, let's drop this. Let's do... We can mastery for three, or we can just do this. I'm just gonna do this. Um, cool, so we draw two, we get to drain for two, now we get to add counters. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty sick. Uh, okay, now we have all of our wizard classes. Um, I will leave this up just in case, and there we go guys, we got the win! Yes, that was so sick, I, we were very close to dead there, that was amazing, let's jump into a game too. What's up guys, before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash itresolves. Alright guys, here we are for game number two, and uh, interesting hand, but I think one that we can at least try. Uh, we'll see if this works. We are a little light on lands, of course, but uh, we can lead on that deserted beach, and then that'll at least give us one of the white sources we need for this potential doom scar, which I'm sure we will need. It looks like that will definitely be the case. Um, okay, so we do this. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and do this, actually. I know it's a little underwhelming, but that'll give us the, uh, the card draw here, which is good. Now they have two Ruin Crabs. Well, this is going to be terrible. Um, they did get our Triska Decafile. Oh no, we can't win that way now. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's not a bad one. Uh, let's do this, and let's just go ahead and foretell that Doomscar. Um, and then, unfortunately, we just kind of have to pass here because, of course, they can just freely block. They do have another land. That's not good. Hmm. Interesting thing to note here, they have one snow-covered mountain and one regular mountain. That's a bit odd. Um, that's, that's very, very odd. Okay, so, I mean, the right move right now is definitely to just attack in. Um, and we'll see what they do. Most likely they just block one for one, but in case they didn't, it was worth it to attack in. That's always a nice little tip, by the way. If you happen to be in a position like this, where you know you're going to sweep, and you know it doesn't really matter what happens to your creatures, just go ahead and attack in. Like, there's really not a huge reason not to in that scenario, uh, and so I think it's probably worth it to. I'm just going to throw this out, by the way, because if we get to one more land, that gives us Doomscar opportunity, but this also opens up the Augur next turn which is a great way to win. Uh, against a mill deck, we are certainly at a disadvantage because we're so heavy on the draw uh, that the reality is we could very easily just kind of shoot ourselves in the foot by drawing too many cards. So we are going to need to be a little bit careful, but the auger does give us a win condition, uh, which is certainly great. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I mean, I think it's just to play this out there. We could have Nikoed, I suppose, for one. Um, which wouldn't have been bad, but I think this sets up a must-answer kind of play, which is quite good. I'm sure they've got the answer, but... Oh, okay. Into the Royal. Interesting. Hmm. This is a fascinating little deck here. I mean, it's just is it mill, but, like, they, uh... uh it's different. Slightly different. Um, okay. Let's go for the blue side here, of course. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I just auger again. 
I mean, the good and bad news here is that we're not really in a rush. The bad news is, of course, that they are going to be a, like, Tasha's Laughter deck, and so we probably are going to want to leave up You Find a Villain's Lair, but I'd like to have something on the field to keep pressure going before we really dive into the counter magic. That may be incorrect, that may be the wrong order, I have no idea, but this is probably a Galvanic iteration. Yep. Oh, it wasn't. Wow! Okay, they're copying the Galvanic iteration. This is a cool card. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they mill a lot of cards. <laughs> uh, that's not good. We have 11 cards left. Alright, uh, that's certainly a problem. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, we definitely attack. Um... I'm not sure we do anything else. I think we just leave up the uh, you find a villain's lair and hopefully counter something. But I mean, realistically, this is a bad place to be. There's not really a good way around it. Um, so we throw this out there. I suppose I will just go ahead and foretell this. I think we could have done that last time. That would have been fine. Um, we'll go ahead and attack for three again. Okay. Um, we're gonna have to protect our win con, I think. <laughs> so we let that resolve first. Then we counter the copy. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, Alright, so basically we're just hoping they brick and don't draw like a big mill spell. That's not a big mill spell, thankfully. I mean, it is a mill spell, so it's a problem, but <laughs> we have eight more shots here. Ooh, I don't love this. Um, really don't love this. I do think there's a high risk that we're just going to die to any mill spell here is basically dead. Um, They did take it though, that's interesting. Um, there is a world we set up where we get to kind of, if we can get them close to dead, um, we might be able to kind of just draw our way into the win, uh, which would be kind of nice. Okay. Another auger. Unfortunately, this is a legendary creature, so you cannot play more than one. That is a very important thing to note. Uh, all right, I mean, we attack in. And they do have to be kind of careful here. Uh, that's not ideal. Okay. Let's see what they copy. <laughs> Alright, so now we draw. This is such a tricky game. Um, we discard two. I think it's just this and this. Okay. Um, I don't think we can do it again, unfortunately. Because we kind of need to just be able to replay this to keep this going. Let's play land. Ooh, what a tricky game. All right. Well, here's the hoping, everybody. <laughs> oh, no, they just have us. Yeah, good game. Uh, Evolving Wilds for the win. That's so obnoxious, but they did it. Concede. Man, that was such a close one. We, I think, played the best we could there. I don't think we messed up. I think that was just a really difficult matchup for us. We're a card draw deck against a mill deck. Like, come on. Uh, all right, let's move into one final game. All right, guys, here we are for our third, and like I said, definitely final game here. Uh, definitely an interesting hand, but I think we can try and keep it. I mean, we've got turn two Faithful Mending uh, or Sunset Revelry, depending on the kind of deck we're against, of course. This works great against um, aggro decks, of course. Uh, wire Tapping is an interesting one. Again, something I'd like to try out, so we'll see. Uh, we'll uh, hopefully get a get another win here. I like it. We're one and one right now. This, this deck has been really awesome. Jeremy, thank you again for sharing this one because it's really fun. A little bit janky, of course, but, like, I think that's fine. Like, I I love it. I love janky decks, guys. We're here to have fun today. <laughs> uh, opponent just, 
just hanging out, deciding what to do. Uh, I do want to reiterate, guys, if you guys uh, haven't checked out any of our other content, aside from the gameplay content, uh, please do check it out. We've got our podcast going up with John. We've got live streams, which is gameplay, but it's live streams with John uh, where you can direct challenge him and have a blast doing that. Um, we also have the collection update series, which we just did a small overhaul on uh, in the Saturday edition. That comes out every Saturday. And Thursdays tomorrow, actually, uh, are generally a flex day because Streets of New Capenna is relatively new. We've been kind of sticking with standard. That'll probably flex out into some other formats uh, at some point, but we just haven't really gotten there yet. I'm still enjoying Streets, uh, and so I want to kind of keep this one going for a little bit. Um, it's just a blast of a, of a format, a blast of a set, and so... Um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of cool stuff. I mean, just in the New Capenna Championship, which, again, we talked about on the podcast, which you guys should definitely go and check out. Um, we had a blast talking through the decks, and what's nice is because it's a supported three-color format, you see quite a number of different versions of the same style deck. Uh, we had multiple Jun versions, we had multiple Esper decks, we had all kinds of stuff, and that's just in the top eight. Uh, and so it was really a pleasure to see all that and kind of talk through it with John and get a good grasp on what people are doing. Um, really curious as to what this opponent is doing, speaking of. Uh, not really sure what's going on there. Uh, so we could do one of two things. We can just wizard class, which I think I'm actually okay with. I'd like to get this down and get that going. Uh, it sets up really well with the wiretapping. <laughs> and we might just get a free win here, which... I mean, I'm cool with. It looks like they're just going to skip through their turns, so... Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time left, so this will probably still be our last game regardless of what happens. Um, but, hey, a free win's a free win. I'm going to take it. <laughs> uh, especially after our losing streak over the weekend, man. We were, like, two videos in a row, uh, three straight losses. We got into the third video. We lost again. Thankfully, we got some wins in that one, but it took a while. Uh, and so it is what it is. It was uh, it was a blast though. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I will say attitude is everything. Sometimes you lose a lot and it feels really terrible. And trust me, I know the feeling obviously, um, but that's just the reality of the game. You're not gonna win every time. And so you gotta, you gotta kinda keep it in, in bounds a little bit uh, as you're playing your games. But I think we just win. Nope, they discarded. Very confused. Uh, very, very confused, but that's fine by me. Uh, yeah, I think I just draw two. Let's just set up. We have no maximum hand size, so we're pretty well squared away. Farewell's a great option if they do end up playing anything. They discarded Hinata, so this is clearly a Hinata deck. Um, I don't know. They're just kind of not doing anything. Um, but yeah, attitude is everything, guys. If you if you get yourself on a losing streak, just take a step back. Like, it's totally cool. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We all get losing streaks. Uh, we all have a... I've had very long stretches where I just don't win a single game. Um, like, I'm talking a week-long stretch. Like, it sucks. But you know what? Like, sometimes it's the deck you're playing. Sometimes it's your mood and how you're reacting to the game because, you know, you're being a little bit more impulsive and not thinking through decisions and all that stuff. Sometimes it just takes a, a moment to step back and say, you know what, I'm gonna really think through everything that I'm doing. And if I know I did that, you can call the game a success regardless of whether you won or lost. Um, I think that's so important to remember. So please do, you know, keep a good level head and win free games, apparently. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I know that was kind of a lackluster last game, guys, but we are kind of running out of time. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, so first and foremost, again, Jeremy, I just want to say a huge thank you, my friend, not only for being a mod, but of course, sharing this deck list with me. I really do appreciate it. We have got more decks from Jeremy coming down the line. Uh, he has sent quite a number of decks. So Jeremy, thank you, my friend, for being really on top of the deck building side of things. Uh, this deck is fun. I, I mean, there's no other way around it. It's just a fun deck. Uh, do I think it's like tier one? No, probably not. And Jeremy, I don't mean that to be rude, but I just don't think it's a tier one deck. That being said, it's still a blast and it's still really fun and it works. Uh, we did see it do its thing in that game one. We saw it kind of do its thing in game two. We just kind of ran out of time against a mill deck and that's really not all that surprising. So in my view, this deck is quite good. Um, I think it could use just a couple, just a couple more answers 
Uh, and not necessarily sweepers, I think potentially one-off answers to things, uh, but it is a very relatively proactive deck because you're drawing so much, so I get it. Um, all in all, a blast. Absolutely recommend. It's a really, really fun deck. Very, very enjoyable to play. So Jeremy, thank you again. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you guys have a fantastic Wednesday. Don't forget we'll be back tomorrow with some more gameplay videos, but until then, I will see you guys later. Thanks, guys.